Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. Olisi, the son of Ngobe is my name. And uh, I want to continue. You remember that last time we had a video that I was shooting where I was reviewing the political situation in Zimbabwe, especially the reason why we are failing to hold uh, our opposition political parties together. And in this, uh, I had uh, spoken roughly or briefly about the mainstream opposition that is the citizens coalition for change from the time it was the movement for democratic change alliance uh, under Nelson Chamisa up to now that it is now rudderless let me say after the implosion that happened so I'm taking that forward because last time we were inter uh, we were disrupted rather by electricity uh, load shedding so there was load shedding while I was still busy recording but some people noted the, the video that I done without necessarily understanding that it was an ongoing thing and they accused me of a number of things as if I am fighting advocate Nelson Chamisa because the part that I was at at that particular time when there was load shedding had everything to do with him so I want to extend that uh, recording uh, by continuing to state that the reason why from the days of the MDC up to the days of Triple C and in its current state uh, we have failed to hold this mainstream opposition party together because uh, mainly we don't have an ideology as the opposition in Zimbabwe and I'm not specifically talking about Triple C because I hate Triple C or because I hate Nelson Chamisa but because it has, since the days of the MTC, been the monolithic opposition political party in Zimbabwe. It's been the main opposition party uh, in Zimbabwe. Now, as I had stated earlier on, uh, when the calls for the Grand Opposition Alliance to be formed were made, the agreement was that the MTC be began to lose ground or failed to take over power in 2008 uh, after the split of 2005 and the general consensus was that had the MTC stayed together from 2005 up to 2008 it was going to be very easy for Morgan Swangirai who led the mainstream MTC which was the MTC T at that particular time would have won the required 50% plus one vote of Robert Mugalo of Sanu PF because Morgan Tsongirai, who became the number one uh, candidate or who came out first in the first round of voting, which was done in March 2008, got close to 48%. And the other opposition, which was being led at that particular time by Professor Atham Tambara, got or supported Simama Koni, who got 8%. You add eight percent with this forty-seven point something percent, which um, Morgan Swangirai got. You end up getting fifty-six point something or fifty-eight or fifty-seven percent of the vote. So the general consensus among the opposition uh, or pro-democracy uh, activists was that there is then a need for the MTC to find itself, but not only as the MTC, but also encompass all the opposition parties and come up with one umbrella opposition party. That's how the MTC alliance was formed under the leadership of Morgan Swangirai, who after passing on was succeeded by advocate Nelson Chamisa. So what uh, I had spoken about last week is that the people like MTC 99's job Sikala uh, Jacob Ngari Vume, Welshman Nube, Tendai BT of PTP, uh, Welshman led the MTC Green by that particular time, came together with the mainstream opposition or the mainstream MTC, which was being led by that time, uh, Morgan Twangerai, not because they agreed with him politically, not because they agreed with him ideologically or because they mended their past grievances with him. But you'd remember that they had tried to contest 
the previous elections on their own, which means Nube, after taking over from Tambara contested in 2013, he got around four seats of proportional representation and nothing else. The others had failed to obtain anything. So at the end of the day, they decided that for their own good, we have to be very clear about that, for their own personal political ambitions, they would not make it if they did not join up with the MTC team because the support base had shifted despite the fact that Professor Nube, Gibson Sivanda et al. had disagreed with Morgan Tsongirai who had breached the party's, the party's constitution and become a constitution unto, unto himself because they were of the belief that the constitution of the party must be respected. But despite that, the cultism in our politics saw the support base shifting to follow Mokin Zwangirai with these iniquities as it were. So, Nube and the others realized that without putting their hands, their, 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 their tails between their legs and going back to Mokin Zwangirai, the same fate which befell them in 2013 was going to befall them again in 2018. So that's why they agreed to join hands with Mok and Swangra and that's why they agreed to work with Nelson Chamisa even after Nelson Chamisa had himself again followed in Swangra's footsteps by breaching the party constitution by wrestling illegally party leadership from Tawazani Kupe who according to the MTC T constitution was supposed to take over power for the duration of the time before Congress. So Nube and BT still followed Chamisa because the majority of the people followed him. So they knew, because we're talking here about people who had said that they would not continue with a, a leader who doesn't respect the party's constitution. Now following a person who also became that kind of a leader again. So, because of their own personal political ambitions to safeguard their own positions or to safeguard their own political survival, they followed Nelson Chamisa. And they, they followed him not because they believed he was a pro-democracy activist, not because they believed he was democratic as a leader, because they knew that he had uh, taken over a party in breach of the constitution. So, they were driven by personal ambition. So when they shifted again to follow him to Triple C, you will remember that they took this decision as a collective. First, that they were transforming the alliance, which was the MTC alliance, which was an alliance of seven parties, into a formidable opposition party, a one party. Uh, out of those seven, they still uh, knew that Chamisa was in breach of the constitution. They knew that he was going to, not going to change, but also they wanted to get something out of his support. So they went together after that agreement into forming Triple C, believing that even in this new formation, they would still keep their positions. If they fail to keep their positions, they are going to be representatives in the electable positions on behalf of the party. So even when Chamisa shocked them, when he said that arbitrarily or unilaterally that they are no longer party position holders, they didn't raise any voice before the elections because they knew that if they did that, uh, the party would move away from them and they would remain in the cold with no chance of being elected into any position of going to parliament or being senators or any other position without Nelson Chamis. So they still continued there, grievingly so, hoping that the party would nominate them to go into parliament directly as constituency representatives or as proportional representation candidates. So that's why they continued there. Then what happens? 
Chamisa goes on, he appoints his own people, or according to the allegations that we're getting, imposes his own people in certain positions, leaving these ones in the cold. You heard in one of the rallies in Harare, where supporters of Tendai Bidi were raising his name, shouting, Bidi, Bidi, Bidi. And Chamisa said, I don't, and Menos and Nurutaura, because we have decided on whatever we've decided. So these people were still grieving. And they were waiting for that opportunity that maybe after the elections, something is going to happen on their behalf. Then they saw that there was no intervention that the party leader was coming up with, except the chopping and changing of party spokespersons from Fatsai Mahere to Promise Nkwanazi. Then they decided that enough was enough. They looked for that loophole, and then Chalam happened. And they deployed. These are the people, as we have always been saying, that forget about Zano PF. Zano PF is only benefiting from the internal implosion within Triple C based on the grievances that these former MTC big weeks uh, have or held going to the election and soon after the elections. So these are the people that were behind Chabang all along. The likes of Tendai Biti, the likes of uh, Kareni, the likes of Welshman Nume. These are the people who were fully behind uh, Sengizo Chawang, these are the people who supported him, these are the people who deployed him into doing whatever he was doing. And now that the deed is done, they want to claim their positions in the party. And that's why you know that they are now going to alternate as leaders of the party after Chamisa is left. And they are going to be the ones who will go to court and uh, state that the party has now sorted its uh, problems. You will remember that Chamisa has already resigned. Promise and the staff that is leading, promise is an appointee of Nelson Chamisa. There is no record of him ever holding any position uh, of leadership within Triple C. Is so now, is there a way forward for the Zimbabwean opposition? Yes, there is. But we need to first sit down and map what it is that we want out of the country because it is of no use to come up as a, a, a political party or a political alliance and all you care about is yourself and what position you're going to get and what, you're going, what uh, benefits you're going to get out of that particular position. You need to have the party at heart and how and, and also the country rather at heart not the party and everything else that you do must be based on a certain ideology or philosophy that you are pushing. Because politics is not about positions, politics is not about taking out one party and replacing them with the other. But politics is about pushing a certain ideology. When you take over, there must be an ideology that you are already pushing which shapes your policies. Unfortunately, that is not the case with our opposition. We saw uh, after the formation of Triple C, you would hear the members, including the leader himself, Advocate Chamisa, saying that they don't care about uh, the ideology, they don't care about um, the, the, the policies, they don't care about structures. And at the end of the day, this is where you get hit because you will attract people who are populist or people who are attracted to your populism and they are going in there for personal glory, for personal aggrandizement and for personal benefits. They are going there because there is a chance of going to parliament, there is a chance of taking over council, and that's all they care about. And when they miss out, that's where the problems start. Because there are people who started this MDC movement from 2000. They've been there ever since. Some of them have been in parliament, some of them have been senators, others have been councillors. Others as well have been party leaders benefiting from those things. And they feel entitled to one position or the other. And once you take that away from them, you are taking away uh, food from their table. You are talking here about people who want to have housing stands. People have been there as activists from the beginning. They want housing stands. You are taking that opportunity away from them by blocking them from being councillors. There are people who want 4x4 four four vehicles. There are people who want diplomatic passports and all the other benefits which come which come from uh, 
parliamentary representation and you are taking that away from them. So, they are there not because they care about Zimbabwe, not because they love the party or they love the leader, but because they see a, an opportunity to get something out of, it, or out of it because politics has become one of those get-rich schemes in Zimbabwe. So we need to go back to the drawing board and say, what is it that we want out of Zimbabwe? What philosophy do we drive forward? Because in politics, it must be a contestation of ideas on how uh, to manage a country's resources, on who should own a country's resources, who should own the means of production, who should direct the economy, and who should benefit from that economy. And if you don't have an ideology, you don't know who should own the economy because you believe that it's you who must get something out of this political movement. That's why people would go to a populist leader knowing that this person doesn't respect uh, the wills of the people, this person doesn't even care about the country, but because they see an opportunity of getting into parliament or into council, they will rally behind that leader while backbiting the same leader after they fail to get what they want. So the people who get into our opposition politics, especially the mainstream opposition which has uh, the highest support base or the biggest support base are going there because they see an opportunity. To them it's a job opportunity. Once you take that away from them, you have taken away the need for them to continue running behind you. That is when then they will start saying, okay, Chabam will say, how can I become the, a, a, a senator here? Here is a chance. The party is structureless. The party is directionless. Let me take advantage of this loophole. And then Zanu PF, because they want two thirds majority, they would then work with him or support whatever is doing or take advantage, as they did just recently, of what is happening within the opposition. Because what they want, Zanu PF has always wanted a one party state. And anything that presents to them a one party state is uh, a bonus to them. They would go for it. So, uh, this is what happened in Zimbabwe. And we cannot blame one particular person, whether you blame Segezo Chabam alone, or Welshman Nube alone, or Tendai Biti alone, or Nelson Chamisa alone. If you are blaming one particular person for this, you are in the wrong. You are indeed a, a huge part of the problem. Because all of these guys, are, they contribute to certain dynamics within the problem that is our mainstream opposition. They are the reasons why Zanu PF ended up getting to this majority. For example, the likes of Chalam said, if we are not going to be in parliament, then this thing must collapse. We must recall certain people. And they were recalling those certain people so that they would submit their own names, as already Chalam has done, and some of these guys that he started with. Those ones who sent them, he have now taken taken up positions and they're going to get the money that is going to come out of parliament so it's a win for them advocate Nelson Chamisa blocked these guys one way or the other through this uh, alleged imposition of candidates because he provided opportunities for his own boys he wanted himself to get uh, whatever the party is going to get from parliament that is how it's going to be Cut at four, and also the party coffers. I mean, the coffers that the money that comes into the party coffers that's where he stood to benefit. The likes of Welshman Nobe, who are no longer in parliament and are no longer party leaders, had nothing to gain. Then they said, Okay, if we're not going to get anything, then he mustn't get anything. And what does Chamisa do? His people are recalled, then elections are held. What does he do? He doesn't beg these other opposition parties, he tells people not to vote. Because also, he doesn't care about whether Zanu PF gets two thirds or not, for as long as the people who block Zanu PF getting two thirds are not Triple C people or are not his people. So you see that he is also selfish. Instead of fighting Zanu PF for the benefit of Zimbabweans, he is fighting Zanu PF for the benefit of his own party. So for as long as he's not, his party is not going to get anything, because the people that he was backing didn't uh, get across the line in terms of nomination court, then therefore Zanu PF would rather get everything than have Zapu or whatever other party winning those positions. So 
That is another level of selfishness. He's being selfish. We have to state it that way. He is being said, he is selfish just like Chavamu and the others. So these guys are not doing it for you and I. They are doing it for themselves. So now what we need to do is to go back to the drawing board and say, what is Zimbabwe do we want? Who should own the means of production in Zimbabwe? Is it the peasants? Is it the capitalist? Then, after taking that decision, we come up with an ideology around which we will converge to say whether or not I am a leader, whether or not I am uh, chosen as a candidate. This is the ideal that I stand for. Whoever is chosen ahead of me, whoever leads ahead of me, for as long as they still follow this kind of ideology, then my, my dreams would have come true. I will support them. It doesn't have to be you, you, you. Zimbabwe has got close to 16 million people. Let us think about those 16 million people. What is it that we wish for them? Let us think about the next generation. What is it that we wish for them to come on to? So once we have that, then we will design policies that safeguard the interests of the 16 million Zimbabweans, including the millions that are in the diaspora. And the next millions that are going to be changed, uh, that are going to be changed into this universe, the people are going to live after us. What is it that they should find in that country? Then we will forget about positions. But for as long as we believe that if I am not in a position, therefore nobody else should gain anything out of it. We will continue to form parties, fight among ourselves, split those parties, form new ones, fight among ourselves, split those parties, kill one another, and blame it on zanu -Pierre. So it's because we have found politics as an industry in, in which we need to work. And this has to stop. So this is what I wanted us to discuss today. I will come back based on your views, based on your comments, to take it further next time because we want these things to continue, uh, these engagements rather, to continue because at the end of the day, we are suffering. The whole of Zimbabwe is suffering, including those that are greedy within ZANU PF and Triple C. They are all suffering. So that is what I had for you today. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.